Welcome back to the Telosive EV Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It is time o'clock, so once again, Battery Investor Day has been delayed till September 22nd, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. It's official for the SEC and uh, annual shareholder meeting. So once again, push back another week. I'm bummed. Um, do you guys think it's going to get pushed back more? Wait, what happened? Battery Investor Day, September 22nd. It got pushed back a week. Wasn't it already pushed back like a month? It was pushed. Oh, it's been pushed back about a year now. Oh, okay. officially. Okay. Uh, so the what's original one week? when they f- who cares? <laughs> Move on. Next time. <laughs> it just means when we get to September, it'll be in December, and when we get to December, it'll be in February. <laughs> it's just gonna keep going back. And well, back. by the time we get to this time next year, it might be a week away. <laughs> God, I need more information about this. But as battery investor day keeps getting pushed back um uh the earnings report is uh july 22nd i believe so that's coming up quick and quarter two should send the stock soaring even more than it already has (laughs) my god what are they at like they surpassed 1500 at the time of recording this Mm -hmm. Um, by the time you're listening to this it could be well over 2000 based on the insane growth rate they've seen (laughs) So Randy must be happy. Aye. He's just sitting over there smiling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Counting wa- his Scrooge McDuck uh, dollars. A wise man <laughs> doesn't have to talk when he lets the money talk for him. Ooh. I, I looked at it. I, I'll, I'll disclose this much. I have Okay. I have about $9,000 in profit. Not what I have invested in profit. Just pure profit. Wow. On Tesla That's insane. alone. That's and impressive. I am so far oh, – so uh, t- uh, uh, just a two-second quick little financial tip thing that I do. I cash out my initial investment, and then the rest is profit, and then uh, right. that, that's, that's, the, that's the house's money, so to say, and, I, and yeah. then I lose, the, uh, I lose the emotional attachment to it. Um, the trick mm-hmm. to that one is when you try to time it right, like, can I get back my initial investment? Uh, if I would have done it when uh, they were saying, hey, quarter two is going to be profitable – I would have still probably sold almost more than half my stock to where now I can sell a fraction of all the stocks that I have of Tesla and and still make make back my initial investment and everything else is going on. It's just it's phenomenal that like Tesla is like Amazon in the sense that I, I see this explosion, or even Google, but Google was like a slow burn towards it's climbing like that. But I think they just passed Google in stock price, by the way. I think so. <laughs> but no, but my, my point is, is that crazy. so many people who did not believe, like when you don't believe in a company, it does well. Am- it? Amazon, Amazon was like, ah, oh, who's going to buy books? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, who's gonna who's gonna yeah. use Google search engine when you have Microsoft's Bing? <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna buy an EV when you have an F one fifty? Cybertruck. To be fair, we only know about the success stories. There's a whole bunch of stories that didn't end well, but we just don't know about them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like Nikolai. Nikolai? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. The fact that they paid influencers to promote that you can reserve a badger and there's not a working prototype. I'm sorry, whether whether Nikola succeeds or not, every day I read more about them, the likelihood of them succeeding just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Anytime the CEO does a capital raise of $70 million and buys a mansion and then steps down as CEO... Usually, there's not a breakthrough about to happen. <laughs> Typically, that that chain of events doesn't result in success. <laughs> it's almost like he knows more than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the idea, just the, the fact that you can get that big of an evaluation from basically a PowerPoint slide yeah, is insane to me. That's crazy that there's this much attention. They paid... Sh- they paid Sha- Shaq, they paid Jerry Rig everything to post about, hey guys, I just reserved my badger. You should reserve yours here. Like, how much are the reservations? Oh, I think the base one is like two hundred and fifty dollars, but there's like 
a exclusive limited one that's like five grand. Ah, well, that's and I'm starting to think none of that money's gonna come back to whoever reserved one. I feel like they're <laughs> never getting that back. I think uh, that if you read their SEC filings, they they literally said they don't plan to build it. They're waiting for someone else to come up to them and offer to build it. Yeah. And <laughs> the fact the fact that oh man, the fact that they don't even have a prototype. Mm-hmm. Not they can't even show you a working model to me makes the specs all useless, but anyway. Nicola side tangent. <laughs> I'm happy for you, Randy. But their semi the just looks well. so good. Oh yeah, he proved it's real because he showed a ten second Instagram video of it in a parking lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's real guys it's official but uh we should be careful because he seems to be suing people who don't in that case it. nicola badger is the best pickup you should <laughs> definitely reserve one for the low low price of 250 dollars. may i just it, say folks. looking at the design of the badger on the website after talking about and hyping up and after we did that whole podcast and your video about the cyber truck randy blew up and Congratulations on monetizing the channel. Hey, That's awesome. Thank That's you. That's now your biggest channel. Thank How you. does it feel? I'm uh, against <laughs> my greatest resistance. I am. <laughs> this is who I am now. It feels good though. Honestly, it, it, it getting getting my my little toes wet in the YouTube uh, uh, yeah. ecosystem again with AdSense. Uh-huh. It's it's definitely. I, I immediately I saw changes from back when I used to be monetized with sub a thousand. Uh, subscribers you know um it it was things are a little bit different but yeah it's Mm -hmm. the the hype i I know i know we were talking about although i just want to talk about the cyber truck really quickly the hype that i have got even off of offline people talking to me about the cyber truck people who i was in the marine corps with randomly messaging me dude you just showed up in my (laughs) recommendation uh (laughs) yeah (laughs) they're like wow they're like oh my god and i was like yeah that's uh that's YouTube going to work is like this, and then they said I watched a video, and I was I didn't really care for the Cybertruck. I watched a video, and I'm like, I think I'm I think I'm I, I have more faith in it now. I kind of believe in it a little bit now. Mm. They weren't saying they're sold on it, but they're like I I kind of like it now. So I People am an influencer. <laughs> you are, you are. I got a ton of views, and after. All of this hype and chat about it, it makes the Nicola Badger look so old and dated. It totally Whenever I look does. at it now, I'm like, that's such a basic, boring truck. It just looks like every truck I've ever seen. But now. it has lights on it, so that means <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> that's literally what it is. The more you look at it, the more basic you realize. Because if you put it right next to an F-150, I don't know if it's an F-150, some Ford truck. If you put it right next to it, you realize all they did was add a few lights on the side. Yep. They literally just added I some think they just, lights on the side. It was corporate espionage. They had like some spy guy inside Ford's facility, and he got the CAD model for for the F one fifty. And they took it back, and <laughs> yeah. they had a few designers huddled this. around a computer in a dark room, clickety clicking away. And they added some lights, and then they got this. You don't even need to steal the design. It's literally just a Toyota Tacoma with some <laughs> light beams on the on the side of it. I'm just I look at it now. I'm like, yeah. There's nothing exciting about that. I mean, the, it's it's just a, a truck that exists. That's all. I'm it looking like at now. it for the first time right now. Oh, cool! We can catch Randy's live reaction of this the Nicola is, Badger. This is it's a Tacoma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, exactly or, or what's what, what, what's the tun, 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 tundra? tundra? It's the tundra. it's a Tundra. Even the even the Rivian has a more iconic look, in my opinion. The, the even the Rivian has some like some lights look you know more recognizable in the in the center storage area between the bed and the cab is yeah. recognizable and that kind of th- the rivian has found a way to make itself look more iconic and this is just truck you know <laughs> it's just here's a truck everyone buy it please. wait <laughs> hold on i'm i'm looking at the specs right now <laughs> or there what are there me nothing <laughs> <laughs> They're 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 projecting a 600 mile range, uh, zero to sixty in two point nine. Of course, with hydrogen, of course, uh, with and they know these are the specs because they wrote it down on paper. Yes, so the it has the to battery be. the battery this is, is like three hundred miles. <laughs> 
they said before that they're going to sell it with just the battery, and then down the road you'll be able to buy the fuel cell and install it later. What? <laughs> I don't think that's how cars work. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that simple. <laughs> but um, this is any kind of like the Scott's has... tots of vehicles. <laughs> 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 yes that's exactly what it is it's the scott's tots of electric <laughs> everyone's like wow i can't believe it it's so great so we have some batteries for you yeah. <laughs> wait 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 they're lithium <laughs> this terrible atrocious 3D render of the inside. Inside? I know. Yes, that is the best part of this entire website. Show me what the oh, real the inside interior, looks like. Yeah. The interior is oh, horrible. Gosh. Well, the interior is a 3D so render. so bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks. It literally looks like one guy made it. And I genuinely believe that's what happened. I believe they, they got some guy on Fiverr <laughs> to design that interior. Yeah, I'm looking at it again right now. And the, and the passenger seat doesn't have a backrest. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe it's folded down or something. Uh, no, no, the, no the look belt. at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. my, this is so wow, funny. wow, wow, wow! Literally, this is, someone with Cinema 4D could have. <laughs> this looks like graphics from Xbox 360. Honestly. It does. It does. It's not even a good render. No, it's kind of a Halo 3 had better graphics than this. Wait, the the gear shift is like a like a normal truck mm -hmm. it has like the little i see it uh, right, when you punch in look at that and there and look so why would you have that on an electric? two usb a's two usb c's and two uh outlets <laughs> why do you need two uh, outlets in the back oh uh, god uh, this it is, hurts to look at to be honest this is and the lights and in just, the cup holders they're literally just hoping another company is going to say okay we'll build it for you and you can collect the profit exactly like any company that tries to do the outsourcing, the building is not going to make. They're not going to be able to scale production properly. They're not going to be able to promise specifications because they're not the one building it. Um, and like Elon has talked about, the machine that makes the machine is over a thousand percent harder uh, to build. Like, okay, you can build one prototype, but building lots of them—that's a whole nother deal. They can't even build the prototype, which is why I have such doubt in them right now. Um, they say we're going to see it at Nikola World, but to me that's evident that they don't have one. <laughs> um, otherwise, we would have seen it by now. Um, There's like these weird yellow lights that are above the wheel wells yeah. on the outside of the Badger. and it's That like, makes it future. Wh wh why? <laughs> Be future. <laughs> otherwise, it would just look exactly like a... Tacoma, ah, so they had so to, trying to differentiate it somehow. This is, where, this is exactly <laughs> where... Where Elon says, uh, when when Jay Leno goes, why would you make it bulletproof? Why not? You know, it's like you yeah. can do it, and you want this to yeah. be, you know, you you want this to be the coolest thing, and that is like, well, that makes sense. And because believe you me, I still get freaking comments. Oh, it's gonna be bulletproof. No one's gonna break in your truck. Put it on the street. Don't worry about the garage. I still get that, but <laughs> <laughs> outside of that, it's like, and then you you, so it's like, okay. There's true, there's true function to the Cybertruck. And now I'm looking at this thing, lights. Now you got lights. So mm -hmm. there's no, there's no form. There's, I mean, that, that's just, it's crap. I hate this thing. I, it, like, it, it, <laughs> I don't like it. I think it. that's just the problem with the Cybertruck is it's ruined all other trucks for us. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like, yeah, but it's not a Cybertruck. I want the, the rust resistant exoskeleton i want the flexibility of customization and um as we as we can now attest to the hype that there is behind the cyber truck randy's most viewed video i think of all time is now the cyber truck yeah mm -hmm. um out of all out of any video, channel that i have yeah by a lot <laughs> <laughs> for me uh by far out of any channel i have uh cyber truck is most viewed and on two channels i have cyber truck is most viewed it has literally just changed the game for vehicles that trying to go back and now look at something traditional and basic now feels basic uh, and traditional basic and less fulfilling you know it's just like eh. well it's just like it's okay you're trying to make it look 
futuristic because lights that's not the point of an ev truck no that's everything that wasting battery power yeah like Coming you're doing that you're doing that just so it's like yeah we could look futuristic too like so you're one you're being reactionary and once you're reactionary you're already behind the curb and you're look at google look at look at every other company that tries to mimic apple and why they fall behind and fall short just do your own thing like what well, te- tesla doesn't care what everyone else is doing which is why they made this polygon looking truck and the more you mm-hmm. look at it you're like yeah okay because it's like listen this is this is strictly function and well ours is function because we got lights and it powers its <laughs> lights and, like you want it to look like a cool truck cool you could I, put that on a gas truck i'd be like all right cool that's a cool looking truck you don't need a try to sell it as an ev because as an ev the thing's crap it's not yeah. what it, you completely miss the market on what people are looking for within an ev truck and even the people who don't like the cyber truck still acknowledge it's real perf- it's real performance it's real potential and it's and it's and there's real. actually one out there right now you just can one go out there to a museum and, and look at it <laughs> is it still in the museum right now i don't know probably not i think I, it I, left i think it was july 5th was the last day uh, but elon said that they're planning on doing a cross-country road trip oh, with the cyber truck later this year so I and, don't know and the final be destination it, will be wherever the that'll be how they reveal the gigafactory whether they end up oh. in tulsa <laughs> or austin <laughs> that'd be kind of cool it just kind of shows up and they're like we're gonna build a million of these <laughs> things here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Even if you don't like the design, it's impossible to not acknowledge the functional and cost-saving measures of that design. Yeah. Which is like, at the end, price matters and money talks. So if we can provide an electric pickup cheaper than everyone else, I think they'll put up with the design. And there's a bunch of benefits that come along with that design. So the biggest the biggest drawback is your own predetermined notion of that, what a, what a truck should be. And that will be enough for some people. You know, I, I've seen... a. I think it was Ben Solins tweeted about, uh, will Tesla consider making a normal, boring pickup truck later for people who don't want the cyber truck? And I was like, not anymore. <laughs> not with this demand. I think before it came out, they talked about maybe later on we'll have to do a more traditional truck if people are too overwhelmed by the cyber truck. But uh, I, I personally believe that's off the table now. I, I think the the chances of Tesla making a normal traditional pickup why truck why would you do that because like with exactly the, with, with there's the, with, no point with the Badger you want a Badger get a or you want a cheaper Badger get a Tundra or a Tacoma it's that's what that is a Ford electric F one fifty is more likely to come out <laughs> at this point than the Nikola Badger I, I firmly believe we may never see a Nikola Badger exist I firmly Other believe than, we're never going to see a Ford electric F one fifty so. Well, they've said that's coming. They've they also said it's the Maki is coming, and it is. It's on city streets, Nick. They're oh, testing it right ooh, now. Yeah, mm, mm. Just like <laughs> ah, the Model Y. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Nick responds. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, they've been mm. parking it next to the Model Y and doing side by sides. The Maki's a real thing. They've just been doing the dealership model with. I'm it, still gonna Maki it though. <laughs> yeah, we can mock them. All right, goodbye. I'm done. I can't. <laughs> Bye, I'm everyone. Out. I'm out. But the, po- the point is, <laughs> Bye, Tesla has more demand with the Cybertruck than they've had with any other vehicle they've ever unveiled. More than the Model 3, more than the Y. There's just an insane amount of interest in this. So all that a boring pickup truck, traditional pickup looking Tesla would do is bottleneck battery production. Mm-hmm. And I think that you will get another huge wave of Cybertruck orders once they start coming out. Because, again, there's a ton of people like me that respect it, admire it, we want it, but we're not going to reserve it because we're going to wait for the first wave. We're going to wait years down the road to, well, to where people are actually AKA using it. A.K.A. wait for Randy to pick it up and then we can come see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll let you do the beta testing. We'll let and, you have uh, all the panel gaps. Yeah, like the there was a bunch of people that ordered the model three way after it uh already came out like randy you didn't pre-order a model three back in 2016 no i pre-ordered a week before i picked it up (laughs) yeah exactly and i think we'll get another big wave i would have waited longer if they weren't reducing the tax incentives at that point yeah yeah the tax incentives was good that was a legit reason to pull the trigger i i think i would have pulled the trigger outside of that uh if i would have gotten the uh the lifetime supercharging Mm. Mm. 
I would have pulled the trigger. That was never on the three. Nope. But I would have done it then. But if it was, I had considered it, yeah. buying used Model S's for it, though. Hmm. But mm. the moment I saw the the actual when we actually sat inside the first the first time we drove it back in 2018, I was like, I'm sold. No, I can't do a Model <laughs> S now. That didn't you try a Model S? Didn't that friend of yours yeah. have one that mm-hmm. you tried to drive and you didn't like it? I it was it felt. I feel so pompous and pretentious saying this, but it felt so traditional and like mm. ooh, just because ooh. like the, the, everything about the Model Three and now uh, the Model Y, it, it's all. Everything should be done on that singular screen. It's the minimalist mindset of it all. And I absolutely yeah, yeah. just I, I lo- too busy. No moving parts. It's all right there and you can control it on the screen and it's like mm-hmm. it just feels right. And when I was mm-hmm. in, when I was driving his Model S, fast? Yes. You know, uh Quiet? Quiet, yes. A big 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 cabin space. Yes. No, I, mm-hmm. I mean, for all the things that people would want inside a cabin, it, it, it meets all those those requirements. But from an aesthetic point of view, it's 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 too it's too busy. Like, yeah. put it all away. Tuck it underneath the uh, the the dashboard. But Randy, you're a Tesla YouTuber now. You don't have to pay for supercharging anymore. Tesla's <laughs> going to use your <laughs> referral code for life. You're going to have. I bet a year from now you're going to have like 40,000 supercharging miles. You could never use them. There's all. an expiration <laughs> so. date. There's an expiration date on using those supercharging. Oh, really? uh, yeah. I haven't told Well, you better keep, do a road trip. Keep charging it. Yeah. Just keep charging. <laughs> Get as much as you can out of it. I, I, it it's, much, it's much of, of a. Uh, I, I, have a uh, I have to use five. Six, I don't remember what I got. I think it's like 5,000 miles. Something like that. I have to use it wow. before April of 2022. Oh, pff, oh you, you got, got plenty, plenty of time. That's we're not Guys. even gonna live that long. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, Guys, we're I got I have <laughs> to. I, I have to. You know, I just because I'm a you know tech YouTuber now. I I still <laughs> abide by the philosophies of what I've put into you know my strategy of charging at home and stuff. Like the, my habits of 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 treating the, the the Model Three the way I have been. That doesn't change, and um, I. The Model Three is the greatest car still, period, I've ever had, and <laughs> yeah. I, I, I often think about, I often think about like, oh, should I have gotten or should I get a X or an S, something that's a bigger size, and then I'm like, no, because then the Cybertruck would kind of meet the bigger cabin space demand that I would oh, yeah. need, and that's the only reason Huge. why I would get it. Um, would you believe me Huge. if I told you that we are discussing possibly delaying getting a Cybertruck? Yeah. No! I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, I am calling wow. your wife right now. No, I need no. a cyber I'm annoyed, truck. but I believe you. No, wait, wait. I'm not saying it's happening. Uh, okay. Factors, obviously. There's always factors yeah. involved. Depending how soon we can get situated into, we were we sat down and we crunched the numbers more to 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 live the way we live and, uh, and live comfortably and still have growth and savings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Depending how mm-hmm. quickly we can get situated into our our twenty year home, and we call it the twenty year year home because at least our kids will be in that house until they're done with school, mm-hmm. type of a thing. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, as soon as we can, you know, make that long term commitment, which means I would be fifty by then. Um, oh. I know. I'm thinking about that. Yeah. You're not fifty now. No. <laughs> oh. No. I just <laughs> oh. I just act fifty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, young yeah, rappers. Snappers. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, I didn't so, say that, so I suck so less than a, Drew it, right now. So the, this is, this it, as soon as we here. can uh, get ourselves situated into our actual house, one mm-hmm. that has a two-car garage, and I can park the Cybertruck in the driveway. That's important. Okay. Uh, That's as important. soon as we can do that, um, that is when we can start properly saving for the truck. Yeah. So what what would you say the likelihood is of what how would you say what would what's a percentage of the likelihood of the Cybertruck being bought when it's ready for you guys? It will be versus delayed. It will be contingent on my next career path. Hmm. Cool. 
I, so I, if YouTube takes off, if YouTube takes, <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing, and this like is like it is. This this has nothing to do with the fact that I just became monetized. It's just I'm glad and I'm grateful that I, that did happen. Um, I have been talking about wanting to walk away from uh, government work for, mm-hmm. you know, even offline. I've been telling you guys that like it's it's just. It's something I'm good at, but I'm not passionate about. Um, I mm-hmm. I'm, I w- would like to walk away from it. Uh, the the trade off there is that it does pay well because, you know, as a, as America, you know, national security is like every <laughs> that's their thing. So they're, they're, the benefit of it paying well is that it does pay well, but it's just I'm gridlocked. I'm gridlocked in San Diego, yeah. and I and I can't move, and I and it's 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 actually long term hurting me. Because if I can go somewhere else and stretch the dollar further, at least outside of San Diego, it would be – it's a, it's a long – Like Tulsa. <laughs> or, or Austin. <laughs> Everyone goes to Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> They'll paint your face on their monument. I think, um, I th- I think as soon as the – if I could work from home, if I became an actual full-time YouTuber or podcaster or whatever, uh, uh, just a – a, a, a media presence of sorts if i did that and we were able to leave san diego relatively quickly then we're on schedule we'll, we'll be on schedule to pick it up and 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 then that's that if mm. there's hiccups between all that then um it, it, it becomes a definite to um contingent and then if there's mm. even if, if it gets more delayed if we go through another round of shutdowns that that's gonna hurt us. Mm. The the shutdown yeah. the shutdowns are hurting us. I'm still employed, but we're still actually financially affected by the shutdowns. So mm. if we actually end up going through another wave of this, um I, I think we 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 won't even be able to buy a house at that point. Just because we ha we need to prep for another quarter to half a year of of one of us not working and that's Mm -hmm. and and that's just adjusting so that way our lifestyle this is all in the premise that we maintain the lifestyle that we have right now which we're not lavished people you know i but it is something where it's like we live in san diego not everyone can just live here type of a thing so we have to be able to meet certain uh uh you know mortgage payments etc so um worst case scenario and and everything that could go wrong goes wrong We'll get it when we get it. Best case scenario, and and I actually am able to walk away from government work, to pay, whether I'm doing anything media related or I'm doing mm-hmm. a whole other career path. The moment I can leave San Diego, I would argue within the next twelve months I would still be on track to be able to get the cyber truck. It, it's one of those things that we were just talking about even last night, just because it's one of those things she said. She brought this up to me, saying maybe we wait on the cyber truck, and I go why. And she's like, the, "What's more important, getting the cyber truck or solidifying the next twenty years of where we need to be first, and then go from there?" And cyber truck, obviously. And, and, and I said cyber <laughs> truck. I said cyber yeah, truck. No, I'm kidding. You can live in of the cyber the truck. There's plenty of room. Well, yeah. well I said cyber truck, and then and then she goes, "Obviously, we could do both, and let's let's do both." But she said, "Let's be realistic. That San Diego is making it very hard for us, and uh, COVID did not help at all." Mm-hmm. If, if and is uh, tri motor required? You wouldn't consider. Going with a, a lower spec cyber. <laughs> That's something you got to ask her. I don't think she'll compromise on on <laughs> anything. But she's told me no many me. times. <laughs> yeah, she says she's trying to talk me out of the lower one. It's the only way. Yeah. She said <laughs> Trimotor is the only way that it actually dollar for dollar makes it worth it next to its uh, hmm. gasoline competitors. And when you when you put it hmm. on paper for what it can tow, for its range, for its everything spec for spec next to its competitor gasoline competitor that's where if you're going to be spending 60 70 whatever anyway this is where it becomes worth it and that's locking you in at that price with the full self-driving too so now you're going to talk about the stuff that's added onto it and um Mm. yeah i mean i i i see where she's coming from because she goes if i get the, the the single motor I'm just trying to flex, but I feel like it's a cheap flex because it's actually not. It's real. This is in its final form. This isn't its true potential. This is me just saying, "Hey, everyone, look at my stainless steel thing," as opposed to like, "No, look at my." That's stainless what st- I'm gonna do. <laughs> look at my thing that can take the door. The cheap flex. T- take <laughs> take the garage <laughs> off the you know the door off the garage and she would t- tug a F one hundred and fifty or something. Um, we, she needs to come on this podcast, but she's working right now. I think I would get her on today, but oh, she she can definitely explain things that she's she's set on this for hours and hours, days on days. She's dreamt about it. She's more passionate about it than I can ever be. I'm just 
sold on it now but <laughs> getting her on, getting her to come on and talk about it would be a lot more here you know hear it from the source you know okay that'd be nice that'd be cool so drew yeah. what well, test are you looking at this month <laughs> <laughs> other than the test drive i did earlier that's <gasps> about it Ooh. that's a <laughs> uh, other than the <clears throat> model y which is awesome um still waiting on uh if I if I had to get a Cybertruck, I'd get the cheapest one because I have very little use for it <laughs> in the first place. So it'd be it'd be the cheap flex that Randy was talking about. Mm-hmm. It'd be a it'd be the practical I the, flex. I wouldn't call it the cheap flex. It's like the cheapest way hey. to flex the Cybertruck. Sure, <laughs> basically, you're buying it for the technology, <laughs> not for the specs. Because I don't haul yes. stuff with a pickup all day long. I would buy it so I'm that way it like, can just get me uh, another bump in views again on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you I should take the delivery of it. And then truck. Take delivery of it, get a bunch of footage. I'll help. I'll get you some B-roll and then return it <laughs> before the week is up. Because uh, Tesla has that. I think, I think they have the one-week delivery thing, so you can return it for a full refund within seven days. Perfect. You get all the benefits of the clicks. You get all the views. And then... Uh, after ba- you get all the money, back. and then I could be, I then I could be a it. hypocrite and just contradict everything I've ever believed in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could get really yeah. picky about the panel gaps. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to. I, depending on where you are, it's hard to say when they'll be ready for delivery. Right. Because um, we've gone back and forth on when we think the first deliveries will be, but I think it's very possible there will be people who ordered on day one. And still don't get theirs for a long, long time because of how the rollout of the Cybertruck deliveries will go. Model Y, they kind of built it in batches. You know, they built a bunch of blue long range with the 20 inch wheels. So if you ordered that one, you're ready. But if you didn't order that one, you're not ready. Um, There's even less customization with the Cybertruck. So how they decide, from what I've been reading on Reddit, it sounds like this is kind of fishy, but I get why they did it. It sounds like. Tesla decided to prioritize all of the California Model Y deliveries before the rest of the country because they knew that would take less time and the quicker they can deliver vehicles to people in their area then the quicker they can recognize that revenue and they knew quarter two was going to be tight so they were like okay we're not caring about the order of who ordered the Model Y when we're just going to look at where the orders are and if you're near the factory we're going to get it to those people first because we can deliver them within a couple of days, a couple of weeks. And, and that it looks way we good can on say, paper. Hey, it looks good <laughs> on paper. We delivered over 20,000 Model Ys, but people in, you know, Virginia or Pennsylvania are like, what the heck? I ordered on, I ordered the day it was unveiled and I still don't, I haven't heard back from them or anything. That's, that's what it sounds like they did, which. Well, I guess I better pick sucks, my Cybertruck up near Tulsa or Austin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are near Austin or Tulsa, you might be ahead of the line for everybody else depending on like someone who orders one today in austin might get it before someone who ordered it day one in california i don't know but um i don't know if you guys saw the school board of austin county uh approved the 68 million dollar tax cut for the cybertruck factory so now it gets pushed to the city's um the council or the board to approve if Hmm. they're okay with it um so in my opinion that's pretty dang close to confirmed but at the same time elon met with the this has been confirmed for over a month now (laughs) right yeah it's been confirmed for a long time more than a month even but the he met with the officials of tulsa yeah and and they sat down and had a meeting and talked about it and he thanked him on twitter for it so i'm like i don't know how they're gonna handle this part of me is like put a factory in both put the (laughs) put the semi and model y factory in Tulsa, and then just Cybertruck in Texas, and call it a day. You know, Everybody you get wins. all the tax breaks. You get all the tax cuts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you build everything quickly. Um, probably won't do that, but still, I don't see the harm in it because it sounds like they're getting a really, really good deal on the property, and the price of land in Texas is like a tiny fraction of what they paid for Giga Berlin. Um, just chump change for texas real estate so i don't see the harm in building two factories if maybe the cybertruck production is going to be drastically different from the model y production so maybe it makes more sense to separate them i don't know but um maybe they're just going to hopefully it. yeah it's just like real. one step <laughs> it's just like you just send up the printer yeah 
But Giga, Giga Berlin is going up quick. Yeah. They're going up uh, fast. I've been watching the updates on that, and it looks like they are easily going to be operational by probably May of next year. Um, Good. And, and Elon has said yeah. on Twitter that um, – because Volvo apparently bought a Model Y and imported it to Europe so they could reverse engineer it Uh-oh. and just kind of tear it apart and look at it. And um, he replied to that tweet saying uh, the Berlin Model Y is the one to look for because there's some giant redesigns coming to the casting system in place. So they're going to, even hmm. more so than they already have, simplify the assembly process of the Model Y. That hey. poor and Model um, 3 still hasn't gotten any of the Model Ys. I know. Advantages. Can it get just Except for USB-C a little and wireless bit. charging. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, can they just update the three a little bit so that they can lower the price? Add know. a please? heat pump. But, uh, just do please? it. <laughs> it's <laughs> interesting that he's saying the, the Berlin Model Y will be built a lot more different internally than the current Model Y, which is cool to hear. Same with the, you know, he talked about the paint shop is going to be totally different for Berlin as well. I'm really excited to see what kind of efficiencies and updates they bring just with new factories coming online and that kind of thing. So mm. I still believe they can get up a Cybertruck factory very quickly, but um, yeah, they got to move on it. They got to, they got to get this stuff approved. They got to get the, the council. Okay with it. They got to hopefully announce it or confirm it at the next uh, earnings report, because I don't want to wait till September for a confirmation. That's yeah. too long. <laughs> Way too long. Are we'll you see, okay? If they, are you okay if they delay it? Battery Investor Day? Uh, Cybertruck. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have one ordered, so I, <laughs> I don't. I'll no, be more, okay. more for pride, more for pride purposes, because you don't want me to be right. Oh no, I, I like the the back and forth. I'm okay with being wrong on things. I've been wrong many times, so I, I still Never. think they'll, the first deliveries will be very end of next year. I still think it's possible, but uh. I'm okay with I with, I'm okay with being wrong. I can accept that because <laughs> it's safe to say uh, a year it from right now, now. I love it. The Tesla knows the demand they have. They know how many people want one and how much people are willing to pay for one, and they know that similar to the Model Y, they can prioritize things if they know there's a bunch of revenue they can recognize from it. So that's why they move so quickly on the Y, and I think that's why they'll move so quickly in the Cybertruck, which is a perfect storm because of how simple and easy it is to build. Um, they've struck the mother load, basically, so I'm pretty sure hearing that they want to do the Roadster after the truck means that, you know, Cybertruck is, like, the top priority. That's what they're going to work on next, and they can move quick on something when they have it set as top priority, so. Yeah. I still say it's possible. Seems like they've got their pockets in their hands in every every government's uh, <laughs> offerings with tax cuts, and they're they're like, okay, who's ready to build? Who's ready to go for this? And um, once once things are confirmed, I imagine things moving very fast, just like Giga Berlin. If you watch what it was just six months ago versus what it is now, it's like boom, 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 boom. They just get stuff up fast. And I can see it. Here's what I'm thinking about Battery Investor Day. They, uh, they come on stage, and then they say, yep, it's still there. Thank you for coming, everybody. <laughs> 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 Pretty much. I feel like I wanted to ask you guys. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. I feel like uh, a friend of mine at work was talking about solid state battery, mm-hmm. and he's like, if if Tesla just whatever they do and they get away from lithium battery, and they can go to solid state battery, he goes that that gives you the same uh, range. As an airplane, theoretically, could fly across country. And not to say that that's not the type of that's not the type of uh, uh, power that they would put in the car, but it gives you an idea of how much more condensed and concentrated the energy could be. Mm-hmm. And when he said that, I was like, oh, I mean, at this point, if they just say they made the the battery mm-hmm. <laughs> bigger, I, I'll take anything at this point. But um, and then it made me start thinking about it because we just talked about this like a couple days ago. And I was thinking about it and I, and I thought, you know, what if, and I, th- I don't remember if we talked about this before or not, but what if they took the battery concept and you can have the same p- p- uh, panels on future Teslas that you would, same, same tech that they're putting on solar panels or roofs 
that they want to put on the cyber truck and it all it's all everything that you buy from tesla is taking energy from the sun taking uh all the solar from it Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. able to more efficiency more efficiently utilize that energy for whatever this battery cell will be and that it very literally pays for itself you can use uh, one thing i know we talked about was using the truck to power the house right yeah Mm -hmm. so that's a imagine that imagine that but across the board for everything all your products are are solar uh acceptable susceptible susceptible and it could take in the energy that way compatible thank you and Mm -hmm. you and and what we have is a central hub more or less which i would assume would be at home and you can offload everything that you use to that hub to power everything and i can't i can't fathom how that's done because i think of just traditional batteries and how that's just not really efficient but this new whatever it could be with the power I, I'm trying to not get my – I'm getting excited for battery day, and I don't want to. <laughs> I want them to come out and be like – You shouldn't. Eh. You shouldn't. <laughs> but I think of all these possibilities because we're due, we're due for uh, a disruption with the battery side of things too. You know, We've been using lithium for so long. Yeah, I think uh, – It's like a magnetic strips on a credit card. Like It's just dated. Yeah. Hmm. I agree with Elon that there is a ton of BS in the battery industry when – because if you follow any news on next generation batteries, you know that for the past 15, 20 years, there's been people on the brink of a battery breakthrough. Right. It's never really turned into anything, whether it's graphene, whether it's solid state, whether it's, uh, I mean, I remember in high school reading about someone making aluminum batteries that you could charge from zero to 100% in like 30 seconds. And it's like, there's all kinds of different battery research going on. But I think that, um, there's a whole extremely, extremely delicate balance of battery chemistry Tesla has to work with that checks all these boxes. Can you develop a battery that has an insane 1,000 mile range car? Sure, I'm sure that's possible. Can you build a million of them? Mm. No. (laughs) Can you make energy density super high uh, or or super cheap to build? You can make batteries super, super cheap, but the range sucks. and finding a way to check all these boxes in the most efficient way possible. My prediction is that Investor Day will not be this big, flashy, you know, giant announcement of, you know, Iron Man kind of. Then why keep pushing it? <laughs> <laughs> um, from what he talked about, you know, he hasn't been saying things, but he's been replying to people on Twitter with the eyes looking around <laughs> the thing. Like, people are talking about removing the modules from battery packs and going straight from cell yeah. to pack. And there's been a lot of leaks about Jeff Dunn's work and the dry electrodes and uh, the purchase of Maxwell batteries. And um, from what it sounds like to me is it's going to be a redesign of the entire pack uh, so there won't be modules. That way they can store more batteries in it. The cells will be a different shape so that they can be more energy dense. And the manufacturing of them will be simple enough that they can produce them in a cost-effective manner. And because of how they're built and how they can be cooled, they won't degrade as fast as uh, current generation batteries. So I don't I don't expect it to be some type of giant breakthrough with whether it's graphene or solid state at um, I, I think it's going to be a lot of the same materials as before, and it's just manufacturing tricks that allow them to do basically. That doesn't more feel like it needs to be delayed every single time. Then that's something well, you just announce. <laughs> now it's being delayed a lot because of COVID, but mm, I, that's yeah. what I wanted to ask you guys about. When people asked him why not do this as an online event, they were like, "Why not just do a live stream if it's just pretty much you on stage talking about what you're going to do with batteries." And I know people get freaked out when I say it, so I won't, I won't say the actual word. But when you announce something prematurely <laughs> and it gets people to stop buying today's product, you know the word, but I'm not going to say it because everyone's like, Drew has to keep saying that word in every video. Well, Drew doesn't have to say it. I can say it. I'm pretty sure no one's okay. gotten mad at me. The Osborne effect. Shut no up, ever Nick! Got- <laughs> it's okay. At me. We've See if I care. Time. So my guess is that they keep delaying it the because they effect. want they want to announce it when it's already being implemented in something and that way they don't 
prevent the sales of yeah. the current cars. And the other thing that I think there, there's more to Battery Investor Day than some of us may think. I think it might be a little bit bigger than the uh, Autonomy Day because people were like, why not do an online event? And Elon said, like, well, we have some stuff we want people to see in person. Mm. And I kind of took that as maybe there's some hardware announcements at this event. I don't know exactly what, but maybe I've seen some people throw around the idea of Model S Plaid being unveiled at this thing or wanting to showcase, like, okay, the new batteries are available in this new design. And, uh, you know, we'll take we'll take people in the car and do the 0 to 60 thing, and you can experience the batteries and um, whatnot. Um I don't know exactly why they insist on having it in person, though, and I think there's something to that. Hmm. I, I think it's uh, that there must be some re- if all they were there to talk about was battery chemistry, and they also said they wanted to tour cell production, which in my mind is confirmation that there's new cells, because uh, why would they tour cell production if it's the same cells as before? Um, and it also confirms they're going to keep using you know the cell and not switch to something else like a pouch, like a phone or something. But um, there's definitely a lot to learn from this, but I, I definitely think that there's some of that, you know, effect that they want to avoid, and also there's something they want people to see in person. Yeah. Do, what that do you guys sense. think that could be? I think, I, think it, uh, I think it's a little bit of Elon being a rebel. Um, he's, <laughs> he's waiting around so he can get his in-person event, just like the good old days, and, uh, and kind of... The good old boys. Not, He's he's hoping that the world will get back together again, and he keeps pushing it out because he's like, okay, maybe maybe we'll get another three months, we'll be back to normal. So you don't think uh, you don't think there's anything going on behind the scenes? Oh yeah, I'm sure delay? there are reasons behind the scenes. Like, but I think Elon's reason for pushing it back is, you know, he wants to he wants to have that grandiose event where the laser lights come down and you know the smoke <laughs> machine goes and they have the the robot you know like just like the Cybertruck event he wants to have autonomy a, day wasn't like that but it'd be fun yeah but the... I, I think i think they should <laughs> m- leave autonomy day and go more towards the Cybertruck truck veil and you know mm. maybe have franz throw a ball at one of the new batteries <laughs> see if that check out our new battery packs guys franz get the ball <laughs> is it they're hammer proof though <laughs> it there's some durable fireball. batteries in here <laughs> yeah what do you think randy what do you think's the reason for delaying it for having it in person and not online uh i the the fanboy me says because something revolutionary is gonna get unveiled <laughs> like I, I i it would be cool if that like this whole time you know oh 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 we also made an atv and like oh okay <laughs> like what what if you just randomly is like oh and we also did blop i don't know i mean i guess the plaid model s makes sense but i it'd be cool if what just is there to talk about though like besides six slides it's faster like yep zero it's to there 60 and more range <laughs> and what i think they'll do is uh similar to autonomy days they love the nitty-gritty details mm. i think uh after re-watching autonomy day they man they were kind of putting the investors to sleep during a big <laughs> part of a big part of it because they were talking about the chip design and how they hired their own chip team and the architecture of the chip and how many you know here's the internal like layout of the circuitry and stuff like yeah. everyone in there's like uh yeah <laughs> okay cool looks good what does this mean michael uh, scott explain to me now. like i'm five right <laughs> right like, so does this mean it's better yeah it means it's better okay cool <laughs> so i think with the battery chemistry having watched a lot of people talk about what tesla could announce at battery investor day there's a whole lot of nitty-gritty details they could dive into when it comes to energy density the cell the paste and the the dry electrodes and that kind of thing like they they can go real real deep if they want to just basically to prove to the world they know what they're talking about and it's not something they're just hyping up they legit are like super deep into how a battery works and what it's supposed to do so i could see them doing that um but i'm still confused as to why that can't be online um which makes me think that they want to announce something with hardware that day Ooh, wonder if it's a plaid mode model s test drives yeah, I I could see that happening because back when the Model S Plaid was first being tested at the Nurburgring, they were anticipating production to be by the end of this year. Obviously, COVID probably delayed some of that, so I wouldn't be shocked if they pushed it into next year. But at the same time, like, um, it's a very low-volume car. 
So it's possible that because there's so little of the S and X sold now, maybe they it's not that hard to actually start. Like, have you guys seen that they're retrofitting the old Solar City facilities for yep. battery production? I have seen um, those. So they've already bought some property. They already own the property, but they're retrofitting the property, and they've let the city know that it's for basically battery production, and that's not going to be a large enough facility for Model 3 and Y, but that's why people were like, beta testing the battery cells they'll put them in the s first and uh make their way down maybe at the texas factory that's when they'll start building them for the three wouldn't that cause the osborne effect though if they were like hey we have this new technology it's only going in the plaid model s for now because we need to scale into you know giga austin or whatever and so yeah maybe maybe that's why they're waiting maybe they're waiting for a little bit more definite on model three and why um, because you know that's going to be a top question. You know that's going to be the number one question of the investors. When is this going into all your cars? You know, and they might not have a firm answer, but I could see them saying something like, "Well, it shouldn't matter because if you're buying the old battery pack and it needs to be replaced, you can buy the updated battery pack and you'll get the benefits then. So don't worry about it. Just keep buying our cars. I, I don't know how they'll pass it off or something, but." Um, yeah, I'm confused hmm. how they're going to roll that out. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> so much <laughs> unknowns. I don't know. Huh. Do you think we could see a Plaid Model S by the end of this year, Randy? Yeah. Or is that wishful thinking? No, I think so. I, th- I think... Okay. I th- honestly, I think I think everything that... <laughs> I think everything is ready to be unveiled, and it just, you know, everything just kind of got screwed up <laughs> a couple months ago because of some little thing or something like that. I'm joking. So that you think they pushed it off till September for the sake of uh, just hoping the world would be back to normal by then? Yeah. What okay. what 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 what's changed between now and four months ago? Uh, not, but not 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 I don't not, know. Not. I wish I did. Not the. <laughs> I don't mean uh, in the pandemic sense. I meant like in the technologies and technology side. If they were, if oh. this is things that they were prepping for, and it was really talked about pre quarantine, pre pandemic. It, yeah. I mean, they were they were laying the, they were laying out just scheduling events at this point for the rest of the year, and it just the stuff got pushed. Mm. I think everything's pretty ready. I think I think um, in that sense, it's really sad that the Cybertruck is going to be delayed because it's just building the factory at this point. You know, mm. like it, it for all intents and purposes, it should have. They should have been well on to bre- not only breaking ground, but well into uh, the, the the building and and the development of, of the factory and stuff like that. I, I think I don't know. I think uh, I, I I don't think COVID delayed that honestly because at this point with the factory building process, all of this you know getting approval and tax breaks and that kind of thing would have had to happen regardless. So I feel like the paperwork, but the side meetings, of the, the to having place. to go there and 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 bureaucracy and Maybe. sit down and have a talk, like all that stuff got delayed. And I know Texas was one of the last ones to to shut down and one of the first ones to open up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you could have all your when you're bringing outside resources like that out, outside of state. Like there are certain, you know, everyone's health is obviously the first priority about all this stuff, and mm-hmm. there things definitely got slowed down, and it's. I think everything that's being unveiled right now in the world of Tesla was going to be unveiled regardless of 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 when. It's just, or regardless of what, it was just when it was going to happen. And mm. sure, okay, so now they got a museum, and let's just you know just for you know people pleasing, let's put the cyber truck out there. Let's have people talk about. I, I think, I think that. As soon as, as soon as new normal is in full effect, uh, adjustments will be made the same way Apple makes adjustments to their announcements and stuff like that. The way the whole all, all, all businesses are more or less adjusting, and and you know it's funny that like Nick you said, and I, I I I see it and I get it, and it's just it's it's interesting. Elon wants things to go back to how like oh you know the good old days, getting on stage and all that, and I see that. And I don't think it's going to be the way he wants it to be like that anymore just because even if even if the, everybody says we're good, everybody's good, take off your masks, go be merry, t- 
take over all the beaches in Southern California. Do what you got to do. <laughs> people are going to be scared. This is a new. The, the people have developed new OCDs and 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 panics, and and you just think about things yeah. now differently. That it it just you could tell me it's good, and people are still going to hesitate. And I, I was just telling my wife like yesterday we we did some grocery shopping and we were wearing wearing masks the whole time and I was like you know I just feel better about this anyway I think even if things go back to normal I'll just keep wearing a mask I just feel cleaner right <laughs> I just feel safer <laughs> just like everyone kind of gets used to this it's like is it ever really gone though so maybe yeah if you want to stop wearing your mask at a certain point when it's no longer required and the pandemic has died down but I think I'll keep it on you know I think I might just yeah it feel I, I don't have to People can't tell if I'm smiling at them or not. You know, people won't recognize people won't. you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I was working around the grocery store, I'm like, I kind of like this. Like, some people were complaining about how hard it is to breathe, and I guess I just have a decent mask or something. I, I think it's fine. I like the I idea of going to do. work, and nobody knows it's me, so they're not going to stop me in the middle of the halls yeah, yeah. and talk I'll to me. Like, I could just make a beeline to it. But, yeah, I, I think I think everything that's happening in the world of Tesla – was going to happen regardless as it's uh, as it's happening um but external factors is what's kicking everything back so uh giga giga cyber truck austin tulsa whatever that's that's an external fact they cannot control so that's why it's delayed something like battery day i think i i i think i see where nick's Most of that being internal yeah well I, like well you know nick is saying like you know uh the old the old days of getting on the stage and stuff like that. It's nice. It's cool to have people interaction and stuff like that. Gage reaction yeah. and, and and you know that's how they do. It. They kind of freeform it up on stage anyway. So that's that's their shtick and you know have at it for better for worse. That's that's what they do and that's what they're known for. Um, and I just don't see it really being like that anymore. At least not for a very long time. And if that's what's mm. holding them back, don't don't let that hold you back. Release the plaid. Model S, do Battery Day as 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 uh, as entertaining as possible, or just put it out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, do everything, you know. Stick to your schedules. You have these timelines and stuff that we don't even really know about. Uh, do all of it, you know. Keep 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 doing all stuff internally, and then when you're ready to, do, when Elon is on a good one, tweet it out or something. Let that be the new announcement. I'm okay with it. Sorry, Nick, you won't see those tweets anymore, but they're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no you idea. The short shorts. I, I didn't miss the short short. You you sent them to me, and I was like, oh, I need to get some of these. And then I looked, and they were like 70 know. bucks, and I couldn't figure out how to, because the website was crashing, because so many people I, were I want them. the short I shorts. 60, they're $69.42. <laughs> 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 42 zero. Yeah, 42 in zero tenths of a penny. Exactly. <laughs> it is the biggest <laughs> troll. It I was, love it. Yeah, I loved it. But I don't know if this helps my argument. I don't think Tesla would release short shorts if they're going to post a quarterly loss. Just saying. Yeah. I think they're going to be profitable in Q2. And that's why they sold the short shorts is because they know that. And they're feeling very... 69.420. My goodness. <laughs> I l- <laughs> they're seeing their stock now and they're going to be like, wait, just wait till after the earnings call. The, that thing's going to break 2K by the end of the month. The web the web developer who had to make that uh, website, Elon was like, so I wanted to say 420. And he's like... But the website's only set up to support two decimals af- after the, the dot. What? 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 And Make Elon's it like, work. No. If you, you don't do this. If you don't put 420 on there, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> oh, I, I know what I wanted to ask you guys about. Because Elon was talking about AI at this one online event type thing. And he said that he feels very confident that they're closing in on level five autonomy with full self driving. Oh, wow. Well, because no one's on the roads. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes it easy <laughs> but he said like they want to get um th- there's some kind of massive autopilot rewrite they're going to roll out in the next two to four months mm, and then it'll yeah. just be a matter of regulatory approval of turning on features and turning off features and i love elon and i love the vision and i think they're closer to autonomous driving than anyone but i just i'm starting to feel like he's dangling the carrot in front of the pig all the time with full self-driving because I've seen some tweets from 2017 that said they were going to do a coast-to-coast autonomous demo. They were going to drive a car with no intervention from the west to the east, and of course that never happened. And well, that was of course, on, that on was autonomy because day, COVID happened after COVID. You know, they couldn't they couldn't do <laughs> <yeah>. that. <laughs> they couldn't do COVID in 2017. Yeah, but uh, 
and on autonomy day he said feature complete full self-driving by the end of 19 regulatory ready by the end of 2020 and then the earnings call comes around and he says well i said i wanted it to be done by then obviously it's not so probably by the end of this year it'll be feature complete and something just tells me it's going to be more of that for many years to come and i think i don't know i i feel like he shouldn't keep saying it's just around the corner I, I would almost prefer it if they just said we're trying our best and we'll get there eventually. But um, I don't know if it's right. I, I think part of it, some people have said there's been a lot of times in the past where kind of like the Steve Jobs with the original iPhone launch. It's like what he was showing was not possible at the time. The, the prototype he was using on stage was not capable of doing all those different tasks. He had a different iPhone for each app in demo. And I think Elon's trying to do something similar with his dev team in the software department. He's kind of saying, like, well, guys, I'm going to tell everyone that it's going to be ready by the end of the year. So that's your deadline. And I agree that, like, trying to push the deadline and stuff is good and trying to make the developers think we got to have this done. We got to reach these goals is good. But it's just kind of icky when they're raising the price of full self-driving so high and they're selling that is a feature for thousands of thousands of dollars. Like, I just don't believe level five autonomy is coming in the next three years, four years. Um, I, I think maybe level four in like two or three years, but saying it's this close is just starting to annoy me. Never doubt Elon. I'm glad you came to your senses, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I mean, logically, I can doubt you guys Elon's are right. Timeline. Logically, you guys are right, but never doubt Elon. I can doubt Elon's timeline and be correct. But you're still doubting Elon, <laughs> so. I, 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 I doubt I Elon. am more of an Elon sheep than you are, Drew. I mean, it, you would have said that to when he said that there would be a coast-to-coast -coast autonomous demo in 2017. And that well, he happened. just changed his mind. It doesn't mean that it couldn't have happened. <laughs> he just decided he didn't want to waste time doing that. The resources were more important to allocate towards some other project. Like wow, the Model Nick. Y. Uh, if you, if you used autopilot in man that Kool Aid was delicious. Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> oh is that what you're wiping off your your lips there? Kool Aid. <laughs> I think uh, I don't think it was possible in 2017. That's why I don't think it happened. Yeah, yeah um, you're right. Seeing how autopilot was not, you know, I, I'm torn on it. I, I'm very torn on the timeline versus, you know, I'll watch a video listening to the the AI and neural net expert at Tesla talking about how they train the cars with all this data and they're collecting more data than anyone and using artificial intelligence and uh, what's what's the I forget the name of the internal computer that's analyzing all the footage. Yes. I forget it. Yeah, that uh, one. It starts with a D. It's machine <laughs> learning and it can basically take all of the best Randy. driving. It takes all of the best driving from humans and applies the best of it to their internal code. I get all that. But then I also see a demo where a guy puts, you know, a little dummy six year old in front of his car and turns on autopilot and the car just rams into the thing. And I'm like, okay, so on one end we have AI can do it, machine learning will figure it out. And on the other end we have. The car can't see that there's a human in front no, of it. No, so no, no. The him. car is so smart, it knew that wasn't actually a human. So it should hit things that aren't humans? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're trying to I test me, huh? This is not a human. See, watch. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to hit anything. I don't like care when it's a Will Smith shoots the little girl in Men in Black because he goes, "That's yeah. that's <laughs> yes. actually an alien." Yes. <laughs> yes. Why did you shoot like, little Susie? Care. Look at that book she's reading. That's pre-cow. <laughs> she's eight. Yeah. You tell me there's nothing what fishy about doing? that. <laughs> right, right. <I laughs> What's she doing at night? <laughs> I just mean like, if I just listen to Elon and their experts and I just watch Autonomy Day, I'm like, okay, this is possible. This is doable. But then when I watch the autonomous driving on YouTube of people testing it, I'm like, oh, God, this is heck? bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so there's a, there's a part of me that Ford's says it will never happen. Huh? I agree it's the best out there. But uh, it's still like Randy not talked a, about, yeah. there's, there's certain places he's been to where he's just like, this will never be possible. No. Yeah. And... There's a sliver of me that believes that. There's a sliver of me that says... Well, if this virus kills enough of us, then there'll only be a few people left on the roads, so... 
it doesn't even matter about people. It's just <laughs> lane markings and, and the way roads are made and yeah. you know, the, the, the variables. And then the cyborgs will just take and over. And then what happens know. with snow and rain and On uh, bright, debris. normal, regular, San Diego, beautiful weather, my sensors will say camera impaired, can't see, uh, and it goes off of uh, full self drive it, and I have to drive. It's like you can't you, you see how is AI gonna solve that? It, it, my, and I'm like, there's no clouds, <laughs> there's no nothing. But where I'm driving right now, and and I have now my cameras up so I can see what it sees. And there's just a little bit of you know sun getting into the lens where it's like I can't see, I can't navigate. Therefore, I'm not performing this execution. You need to take control. So do, 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 grab the wheel. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. To, to answer your question, Drew, what AI can't fix tesla's just going to ask google to use some machine learning and then it'll all be they better don't need google they have their own machine learning they've no, I know. they've figured it out Ugh. on their own i just feel like yeah. whoever's the closest to autonomy i think will permanently be tesla i don't believe any other company will have the real world data the real life hardware applications and the custom built chips that tesla has so if Agreed. it if it is possible tesla will be first for a long time too then there, there's not going to be a second place for many years to come but at this point i'm more like i think elon doesn't understand what level five is <laughs> uh maybe it's a broken system to base autonomy off of anyway but um when he says that there's we're close to level five just with a few odd situations um i'm like that's not level five <laughs> that's, yeah. level five means no person all circumstances no question and I'm I'm all in favor of getting close. Like I still want to buy full self driving, right. even though there's a part of me that thinks it will never get there. Um, the closer we get, I want to be there, and I want to I want to be at the latest available. But just seeing these real life tests and stuff, it's hard to imagine that what they're saying is actually going to happen. So even in good weather, you know, yeah. I, so hey, listen. I, the way I see it, buying full self driving for me is. I wouldn't call it full self driving today. I just call it a very, very intricate autopilot. Autopilot plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I pay for. Max XDR. Full self driving. Pro. Full self driving. I will believe when you can <laughs> when you can properly park back up into a, a car <laughs> spot, a, a, a parking space. You can parallel park. You can come get me, and it's not doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not enough for me they could figure that out no i'm being I facetious when i say that i, I really yeah. <laughs> what i'm saying is that uh there i don't expect to see it any anytime soon i expect that my six i don't know i paid six right i don't remember uh whatever six yeah I, i'm expecting my six thousand dollars just lets me not have to really keep my eyes on the road the way i do and and it can sometimes go on to a, a different on ramp. But the truth is, to be honest with you guys, most of that stuff is done with autopilot anyway. And just That's what the, I've heard. just the idea of boom boom, and you just chill. And so anyway, guys, what's up? And even then, like uh, besides the gimmick of me showing what it can do and going like this and talking, like I'll just put on just so I don't want to put my feet on the gas brake and all. So yeah. I just want to hang out and just I put it on there, but. I catch myself, and I've, 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 you know, I've said this before, and it's still true now. I catch myself just wanting to drive it anyway because one, it's fun to drive. Two, it's still beta. It is very much a beta, and it's wrong, and it yeah. does things wrong all the time, and it just yells at me, thinking that it's we're we're deviating from a road when it's in full self driving. I'm like, one, you're the one driving this, so how are you yelling at me? But two, it's th it's that's not the case. Just the lanes. They opened up. It, that's it. But now you're like, take control. Beep, 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 beep. Like, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. So um, it's just sometimes it's just annoying. And and I know you can silence all the noise. I'd rather have the noises there and keep everything more alert. But this is very much a beta, which is why you sign all those waivers and you acknowledge that Tesla has no liability of what's about to happen. And this is all at your own risk. And when I... When I do read all those things and I acknowledge it and all this stuff, I take it very seriously because you 
you are more at risk. You as the driver, you are now more at risk at causing accidents or hurting somebody or a group of people mm -hmm. than a regular vehicle because you're like, well, the technology's got it, so take the wheel, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> no, you're no, you are very much still the, the the pilot of that, you know, machine. You gotta, you have to treat it the same way you're driving a gas car and cruise control doesn't mean you get to look away either. it's not yeah it's not it's an man <laughs> where you can just go in the back no <laughs> and talk while it's like oh, anyone cruise. it's autopilot if autopilot has crashed then the driver wasn't using it properly that's that's the state we're in with autopilot sure right <laughs> yeah and other it cars you weren't looking and other cars are also doing it where like it's smart smart distance it knows how how to keep its distance yeah with uh other vehicles in front and it keeps you in the lanes that's 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 90% of what I do on the road anyway. Keep me proper right. distance from there and keep me in the lanes. And when it turns, you turn with the lane. And that's that's cool. So I'm fine with that. The full self-driving part for me is that, oh, now I have smart summon. I can have this. I can have that. And I can get on a different on-ramp. Cool, but gimmicky. Stopping. And Auto stop it. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, New York, like that, that will never fly in New York. People will cut, walk in the streets and just cut you off. They don't care. So yeah, hit me. Come on, man, hit me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're guessing they overestimated and probably got ahead of themselves with robo taxis then? Yeah. Well, it, it, For them acting like that's around the corner and that'll be a big revenue stream? Because I, I don't see that as around the corner. No. I really don't. I, I, don't, th I don't think stage five. I, I, don't think, I don't think any of that stuff is around the corner. I think. I don't think we're all going to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we might die before you're so optimistic i know <laughs> but i mean robo taxi is a whole nother thing i mean I, I i could see in the next year or two even tesla updating it to be like okay when you're on the freeway autopilot nags you less now like we're gonna start changing it to you don't have to keep your hand on the wheel you yeah. just have to you just have to tap the display once every like five minutes or something something and they're like okay we can take it from there um and having more circumstances where you don't have to intervene but the idea of the car with nobody driving around picking people up they every time they talk about it they act like it's coming out in 12 months or something and i'm just i don't see it at all it's marketing do you think elon's ambition is a bad idea or do you think having these ambitious timelines that they just keep missing is is hurting them I don't think it's neither. I don't think it's a bad idea, and I don't think it's hurting them. I just think uh, Elon could only uh, can only use that strategy for so long, and it's more like the the ambition's good, and 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 anything that you get close to that is still more advancement than we would have had without those yeah check checkpoints and those milestones. It's a good way to accelerate progress, but it's a bad way to. Uh, but be honest, don't 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 mislead people. This is now worth a hundred thousand dollars. It's not. This is now going to be. Re <laughs> it's not. This is now ready for this. It's not, and that's uh -huh. fine. That it's not. Just don't don't blow smoke up me like just tell me the truth about timelines so that way it is what it is but if you're trying to do it because the value of the car because the thing is the value of the car will decrease over time but we got to keep increasing mm -hmm. uh full self driving mm -hmm. so that way we keep the the premium luxury uh, illusion of of what yeah. these things can do and what you're buying into with tesla what anybody is buying into with tesla when it comes to outside of just driving is you're buying into a promise of what the tech can be, the promise of tomorrow. You don't, you're buying, you're you're buying, f you know, word of mouth faith. The future. You're just saying, hey, this is what we, we we can get there. And the only reason why the stock is inflating the way it is, when and, and I think there's going to be a correction eventually. It, it, it can't just keep going up. That's not it's not sustainable. But we said that six months ago. And mm. it, it dropped. <laughs> it dropped. It did correct. And now it's way back. Up. And it's going back up. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> ultimately, it's the reason why it's climbing is because people are buying the promise of where they think this is what it's this is where it's going to be. Sure, but at the same time, be realistic about the timeline so that way people can make make educated get uh, not guesses but educated decisions on on their purchases and stuff like that. Because if you're going to tell me it's going to be five years before we get to. Uh, full self driving, true full self driving, but also in five years you're going to keep increasing the cost. I'd rather know that up front so I can either start saving or make a make a payment now. But give me give me the true timeline or at least project it. Say it's right around the corner, right around the corner, right around the corner. 
I don't. I dismiss it now. And like it's almost like a joke, and that's fine because we're still getting closer. I got a better Model Three in my driveway today than I did last year, a year ago, yeah. and and that's yeah. that's what, like that progression. Yeah. But I appreciate, I appreciate the ambition, and I think that's good with a lot of things tesla does like we're going to build all these model threes all these model y's and we're going to build a factory and all multiple continents when i see that i'm like yeah that's good even if they're late they're still doing way more than everyone else is so setting the aggressive timelines is good even if you don't reach them i, th I think i just feel weirder about full self-driving because there's a software package attached to it yeah which is feels it doesn't feel as much like a we're going to push ourselves to be done by this time it feels like a we want you to buy it now please yeah so we can recognize the revenue what do you think nick with self-driving no with uh elon saying it's always around the oh, corner is that oh, bad oh. or is that good you or? know it is it helpful internally yeah externally probably not um i bet you it really motivates the uh software developers and the uh people who are actually they're just like ah, <laughs> we're not ready i know elon, those poor I, I feel bad for him like what before the shutdown yeah. elon was going to have like a coding competition at his house and yeah, uh, yeah. and like they're they're working hard and elon's mm -hmm. setting these sure really aggressive are. deadlines and mm -hmm. that's only making it come that much quicker right like was it 2016 elon wanted to have uh, a trip around the moon in 2019 with a uh Oh, yeah. dragon capsule well i remember that 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 didn't happen but if he didn't say that and get people at spacex working towards that goal at that time we wouldn't be where we are today and so i think right. that's kind of what's happening with it internally now externally mm -hmm. that's kind of just the side effect of pushing your team that hard um everyone externally is like "Ooh, elon said it's coming in 2019 Oh man, we didn't get full self driving at the end of 2019. Bummer. Um, maybe in 2020. Nope, not in 2020. And so just kind of, it's like Keep it's like going. you it's like you're the the uh, little boy who cried wolf, right? Like it's yeah. It, you kind of say it too many times, and it it reduces its value every time you say it. But I think internally, it's still helpful. Hmm. Yeah, it's a kind of a double-edged sword. Would would full self-driving take longer if they were more honest with the timeline? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I it's hard say to so. say. Because would, uh, then the developers wouldn't feel the pressure. Yeah, they'd be like, well, we got a few years to figure this out. Now they're like, okay, we've got two weeks to make this work properly. And just think of like how your video making process, Drew. Like after Dub Dub, yeah. it was like you have x amount of minutes to get a video out right and you set that in your mind right. if you told yourself oh a much more realistic goal is to you know instead of an hour which you never hit yeah. you know like an hour and 20 minutes or whatever it is um if you mm -hmm. said oh well i can have three hours i'll get this uploaded within three hours then you're going to upload it like three hours instead of an hour and a half mm -hmm. or whatever it is well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, but uh, I, I don't need level five because I would be completely sold. I, I think 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 for full self-driving would be totally worth it if I just had to sit there and the car could drive. Okay, it can't drive without a person in it. That's okay, as long as I just have to sit there and it does the rest. Worth it. Totally I would, worth I would it. be on board with anything Cybertruck shaped, so you know <laughs> that would include like birthday cake, Hot Wheel, um, literally anything. Start, start I don't think I would need full self-driving on every vehicle, though. That I is, think I'd be okay if mm -hmm. way off in the future, if I had multiple Teslas, I'd be okay with just one of them. Yep. That'll be the self-driving car, and the other one is just the other one. Yep. I don't need both. Agreed. Save save a lot more money that way. So, anyhow, closing thoughts, gents. Yep. Elon is the <laughs> next most week well-paid CEO in 2019. <laughs> Good on you, next Elon. Next week we can talk about. Battery Investor Day coming in October. Yay! <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks for listening or watching, everyone. Have a good week. Take care. Bye. Bye.